Alright guys, in today's video, I got called out. Um, this is a favor for somebody that uh, is like a project manager. So he gave us a restaurant to go look at. It's a buddy of his, I believe. Um, so the story is, the previous guy that they had check a walk-in cooler, told them, you know what? You should really change it out which I understand, but you should really change it out. And I just so happen to have the perfect unit um, at my shop. So I don't know if he should have said those words or, or kind of worded it that way, you know, because all the customer thought was like, well, I might be getting ripped off. Let me call somebody else. So I went out, well, we're going out there in this video. Um, my dad tagged along but uh, I was up on the roof. It was a rain day basically, so I'm in my reliable rain jacket. If you guys are interested, uh, that's in the merch store, but it's not 100% rainproof. It just helps in drizzle, stuff like that. So the rain was on and off. I was up on a roof. I was trying to do it on a day that I wasn't gonna do maintenance because I was very backed up on AC maintenance and then it happened to rain and it fluctuated from heavy to light. So I went up there quickly to go look at it. Um, so essentially they thought, or they wanted a second opinion. And um, you know, I'm all for repairs on old equipment. If it looks in decent shape, I'll go ahead and fix it. And then I'll give them the option to repair and also for uh, new equipment. So. The way I see it and the way a lot of people, you know, talk about it, it's like if you don't give your customers options, you're, you're a hack, right? So I give them the option unless I just don't want to touch it. Like if the thing is falling apart, if the coils are missing all the fins, you know, really outrageous things, I will just be like, I'm not going to touch it. We need to change it out. But if the, uh, if everything is in decent shape and it just needs like a, like a fan motor or a compressor or um, you know controllers or whatever it is a thermostat I'll do the work and uh, in this instance you know I had to go over there give them uh, like I said it was a favor I was just gonna go do a quick overview and then uh, go from there can we fix it can we not pricing quoting all that stuff All right, we got this old ass Tecumchi. From 99. I have to see what it is exactly, but we're gonna check. Cause they wanted to uh, sell a Mahoney unit, another company and uh, they don't, or they want a second opinion. So let's just see if it even turns on. All right, so just checking the windings real quick. We have, dang it. All, across all three, we do have continuity, right? So that means the windings are closed, nothing's trying to open or anything like that. But if we uh, go ahead and check to ground, let's see. We are, we are getting a tone. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So, grounded compressor. I'm going to disconnect this, leave this all uh, disconnected, see if the rest of it turns on, and kind of uh, evaluate. If they just want a new compressor, we'll do that. Starting components and then, um, like the contactor. And see what they want to do, because I think the inside is a small ass dryer. That's a quarter inch. All right, so. Oh, that is weird. So, um, yeah, this is all trash to me. Change out the contactor, starting components, and a compressor. I just want to see if everything else turns on. All right, disconnected this, grounded. Um, I just want to see if the fan turns on and if 
there's any electrical issues up here. Obviously this pressure switch, I mean, I could bypass this to get it automatically open, but we'll leave that there. The only thing I did bypass was the uh, fan cycle. So that one up there, if you trace it, it goes to the fan or one side of it. So then you just put the uh, fan directly on the contactor. And I think I have it on right now. So it's blowing a lot of air. It's a little bit rusty, so can't guarantee that it'll stay on forever, but compressor, starting components, I believe that's an R12 uh, compressor, but the evaporator looks brand new. So I'm gonna double check what the evaporator has and then we'll get out of here. All right, so I checked both sides and uh, we are completely empty. So that's not good either. We'd have to change from a rotor lock to a, just a sweat in if we do it. But now I'm concerned because we have no pressure. And this is a favor for a friend. So I don't know, we might not even put our hands in it. I'm just gonna close up and get out of here. Give them the news. It's an old unit. I realized that somebody had to have mismatched that unit up. Um, I have no idea. I've never dealt with R12 directly as far as like getting it going. I've been told as far as like uh, five, I think it was 502 that I saw when I started. And for that, somebody did help me that, that used to work for us. And now uh, he's somebody that I could call and I've talked to him after he, he went on to a different company uh, for 502, I could use like 404 in its place, right? And not really worry too much about it. And to get old equipment working, at least in the meantime or, or whatnot. And uh, sometimes a customer just wants to see if you, you know you can get another year out of it. I've never dealt directly with R12. So I'll do a quick uh, Google search as far as like what is a drop-in um, or what replace r12 directly as far as something that's similar in pressures but essentially i looked at it i looked it up as from the compressor and, and stuff like that on the condenser it was an r12 unit i go down and i look inside and these evaporators are, me are meant for like a variety of refrigerants so you got to go look at what txv that they put in the power head on the power head, this one was basically an R22 system. So it was R22, 407C, and whatever the other 400s are. For 448 maybe, I'm not sure. We never went that far, we, we stuck with 407. So um, to me, that's mismatched. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if, if one of those matches up with R12 or if they went ahead and made a whole hack job out of it because the customer's complaint after I talked to to them um, was that it never really worked he's like so we had a that was another reason I know I mentioned earlier that they were trying to sell him a new unit but like the other reason he said he's like I don't he, he never got it working properly it was down all the time and then his words were like I don't know maybe he wasn't that good so now we're calling you so I told them, you know, let me look it up. So the only thing that I can match up to that system, and I've, I've tried, I rely on my, my supply house a lot to help me out with that um, retrofitting stuff, and I trust them. The only thing we can match up with is a 134, <clears throat> 134A compressor. So once we get into that, if we do get that approved, because I've been talking back and forth with the uh, restaurant owner, if we do a 134A, the only thing is I, have, I do have to change out the TXV, right? So we're gonna do a 134A system and convert it to that. The evaporator is not that old. I forgot to look at the label, but just going walking in, it was a newer style evaporator, not what I'm used to seeing on an old unit, especially one being R12. So at some point, that it, that inside unit was changed out, but the condenser stayed, right? So at this point, I could either just replace the condenser or the compressor. 
I doing this as a favor I gave them the option of just the compressor but I did tell them and it is in my quote and it's included in the quote that way everything gets charged uh, together is a pressure test because we did not have any pressure or refrigerant in the system I don't know and they don't give me a good explanation as far as like what the tech did and the tech could have like not told them what they did or, or everything that they did so I don't know if the system was evacuated he let it out it has a leak I don't know what happened and if it's something that is leaking we can repair a patch job or something like that like I said doing them a favor doing them a solid stuff like that so like we need to do a leak test first now if I find a if I find a leak in the condenser right or in the coil something where I'm like you know what we're not gonna do the compressor you need a new system at that point we're just gonna charge for the uh, the, the timeout the leak test and all that obviously not the compressor and then we'll go a different route and get get them another quote for a condenser or, or whatever it is that they need right the evaporator could be leaking I don't know if it does pass our pressure test our leak test and we can vacuum it and everything looks good we get a deep vacuum decay test you know everything there's no red flags then we will put the compressor in and go from there so I don't know what that's the other thing is when you get a new customer you don't know what the or the uh, detailed history is I just know that they needed a new compressor they thought they needed a new compressor I went up I verified that it was shorted out uh, grounded so we're gonna have to do all of that to get to even thinking about putting the compressor and I'm not gonna put it in and then figure out we have a leak or anything like that so we're gonna do a leak test first clean out the lines flush out the lines all that so We'll see what happens. Um, like I said, I am talking with the customer, so for now uh, we're waiting to see if that's gonna get scheduled. The unfortunate thing is uh, somebody bought, when I called for a quote, they had a compressor, or they could get one next day. Apparently somebody bought it within that hour or whatever it was that I needed to uh, get a, get the official quote. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It was a short amount of time. They sold it. So now the customer has to wait four to five days. So like with this one, we did um, do the quote through Jobber and there is a section there that I can request a uh, deposit. So for damn sure, they're gonna have to have to place a deposit with us, being a new customer and then being a, a small local place where we've had bad experiences with trying to collect. So once they make a deposit, then we're off to the races, you know? Um, in, the, in the commercial world, we uh, have a lot of big accounts where those big accounts take 30, 60 days, whatever it is, to get billed and then pay. And then they mail out a check a lot of the time. So, like, that always takes a while to where right now we were waiting for, like, when we got it all at once. It was, like, over 50 grand that one of our customers owed us. And then we have another one that owes us almost as much, right? And we're waiting for all that to get paid. Um, during the slow season it just it, it happens at the end of the year it has to deal with them their bonuses their taxes their the stuff that they have to deal with inventory I don't know a lot of stuff piles up and then the payments get um, delayed so thankfully those are coming in and uh, maybe this will get approved at some point so like I said hope you guys enjoyed remember to like comment subscribe all that good stuff and I'll see you guys